YouTube, this is your boy AJ from AJ's Way. And I know you guys haven't seen me in a very, very long time. Man, <laughs> I've been up to a lot. I believe that in these times that God has called us out of what we once known as the normal or the comfortable space into the unknown or the uncomfortable space. And so it's just amazing, you know, it, the growing never feels good, but we know that no pain, no gain. So in order to gain and grow, I have to go through the growing pains to get to where God wants me to be. And so I just want to come on here and just encourage everyone in their faith and everything out here in this world in this current time is so uncertain, but one thing is for certain, Two things for sure, God still sits on the throne. He sits high, but he looks low. We may be in a valley, but there's a mountaintop on the other side of all this. But these times, he's calling us out of the four walls of the church. He's calling us out of the places in which we knew and were so comfortable in and didn't want to do anything else outside of that. Now, we're able to minister to people on a bigger platform than we were able to and just have one-on-one -on -one time with God. He took away all the distractions, all the noise of life so that we can slow down and realize that God is God and he's God all by himself. I know that he did not cause all this pandemic, rioting, looting, all this stuff going on with police brutality, just everything that's going on in the world. He did not cause it, but he will get the glory out of all of it. We have to see the God in everything. We have to trust God even when we cannot trace him. And so we just have to seek his face and delight ourselves in the Lord no matter what life throws our way. And so in these times, I can speak for myself. I've been reading my word more, just looking at scriptures and relating it to today's time. I took a deep dive into my Bible. I know a lot of people are afraid to read Revelation, but I hit it head on. Like I wasn't afraid. I know that the even the word or the meaning of Revelation is God's revealed truth. So that's his revealed truth. So I'm just looking at that and seeing how it ties together with what we're going through in today's time and some of the signs and the birth pains of the earth and so many different things that are going on. I mean, the Bible is the roadmap to life. It's a Christian's manual to how they should conduct their lives and help others and just do many, so many things in the earth. It's there for everybody to read. You have the Bible app. Bibles are sold everywhere in Walmart. I mean, there's Christian stores, whatever it is, like you can get it anywhere just about. And so I just been reading it, reading Revelation, so good. And also a parable, I don't know if you guys heard of it, but most people have, it's in Luke chapter 10. It starts around verse, well, I would say just read the whole Luke chapter 10. That's what I would do and read that. And so basically in there, a lawyer challenges Jesus and says, well, who is our neighbor? And so Jesus doesn't really respond with an answer that you would think that he, he would say, oh, this is your neighbor, yada, 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 and this is that, and that is that. No, he instead responded with a parable, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And I promise you, I keep hearing Luke 10 and sermons and different things, and I was like, wow, that is exactly what I've been reading and studying and breaking down so that I can understand it. So I know that in that parable, Jesus talks about the Good Samaritan that was passing by. And for those of you that don't, don't know the history in the Bible of the Samaritans and the Jews, they did not like each other. I mean, people kind of related to maybe blacks and whites or other races having some racial divide. They did not like each other. I mean, they didn't even want to walk past each other. They would go out and around geographically just to avoid each other. So there was a, a Jew, you know, he was traveling through a town and he was robbed, beaten, and left for dead on the side of the road. So a high priest walked by, didn't even say anything to him. Another fellow Jew walked by, didn't say anything, and just kept going. And so this Samaritan man, he walked by, but he stopped, he stayed, he looked, he, he observed, he had compassion, 
and he decided to help the Jew. He didn't see a Jew in that moment. He saw a man in need of help. So he helped the man on the side of the road. He, it says in the Bible that he helped bandage his wounds and he had it poured wine and oil on them and he put him on one of his animals and he took him to an inn into the town. And so at the end, he puts this man up in the inn and he's saying, hey, he's good to go. He's talking to, I would say, like the representative at the front desk. And so he's talking to the person and saying, hey, I'll pay my dineros. Like this is, this is the money and this is how much this is gonna cost. But let me know if it's gonna cost more than that. I'm covering it now, but if he decides to stay longer, I'll cover that. I look at it as, if he wants to do room service, any other luxury, he can have it at my expense. I will extend my hand to my fellow man. So that's exactly what Jesus said in Luke 10. And I found the specific, it starts, the parable when Jesus is telling about it, it starts at verse 25. So yes, I'll just, to drive the point home, this is where he, he said in verse 35, on the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, which I mentioned, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and whatever more you spend when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And that's what Jesus asked back to the Lord. The high priest that probably crossed the road, he probably even, he probably was walking on the same side. He crossed over and glanced and then kept going about his day. Do you think it was the Jewish man, the Jew? No, it wasn't the Jew. He probably did the same thing as the high priest. He probably crossed over on the other side and avoided the whole situation. But the third man, the good Samaritan man, he put race aside. He put their people's past history and their prejudice against each other. He put all that aside and he just saw one of God's children. And in verse 37, he says, and he said, who showed mercy on him? And then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. And so that's what Jesus is telling us to do. Go do likewise. We see in today's times, you know, racial divides, blacks, whites, Hispanics, Asians, I mean, Native American, Indian, I mean, whatever race, there's racial tension and divides amongst all of God's children. And so look at Luke 10, it's telling you right there, have compassion, have empathy. I think empathy is a real big thing. People don't understand the difference between empathy and sympathy. Sympathy is something that you've been through and you can relate. And, and you're able to talk to that person and help them through it because you've been through it. Empathy is that you may not have been through it. You don't know what it's like. You don't know how it feels, but you love humankind, mankind, and you just want to help. So you do those things because you love humanity. And so it's just amazing. It's in God's word. And so if we just have more compassion, more empathy for one another, take grace off the table, just think, as a human being, would you want to go through that? Would you want your children to go through that? Would you want your children's children to go through that? Would you want a spouse, any part of your family? Would you want to go through some things that certain people have to face in life? So just love one another, love how God loves. That's how I always tell people. And I always go back to the love theory of God. This is how I see it. And this is how it flows. God loves me, I accept that love, I love God back, then I love myself, then I can love anybody else. But if it's not in that order, it'll never work. So I think that all these things that we're seeing in the earth is a result of a heart issue. And I spell heart, lowercase h, capital E, capital A, capital R, lowercase t. The heart is the ear to the soul. So the heart is saying was not right in your soul and something's not right in you to want to step on somebody else and put down another person because they may have not grown up with some of the advantages that you had. And so you just have to have the heart of God. But God told us, love him, but also love your neighbor as you love thyself. So if you're not loving your neighbor, then maybe you don't really love yourself, you know? 
maybe you're the problem. You're saying everything else is the problem, but maybe you're the problem. Before you, you know, cast the first stone or, you know, pluck something out of somebody else's eye, you need to look at yours first. And so it's just that simple. Just have, just understand. And I always tell people this too. People don't care how much you know. They just want to know how much you care. So you have to engage people, meet people where they're at, you know, engage people on a human level. We're all human beings. We're, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. So that's what's going on here. And so it's just amazing to see things go on and, and transpire in this world. And I know that things are going to change for the better. And as long as we get what we're supposed to get out of all of this, that we are one. I always look at it as this too. The cross right here. It's the biggest semblance of everything that Christ stands for. So this right here. This is the vertical experience, the up and down. So I would say God is here. We are God's people, we're here. And Jesus is in the middle. So Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. He died for all of our sins. So he is our, our ticket into God's graces. So that's what's going on with the vertical experience. So you love Jesus and you love God. But here is the horizontal experience. So this is us again. Jesus and God's people. So how can you have a vertical experience without a horizontal experience? You can't say you love God and you don't love God's people. That, that just doesn't work because we are a part of God's body. We were created in his image. So if you don't like me, you really don't like God because he created us all in his image. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. And so also it can go the reverse way. You can love a lot of people. You can love God's people. But do you really love God, Jesus Christ? You can't have one without the other. The cross doesn't look, it's not missing this part that it would just be a straight up and down. And it definitely is not missing this part. So you have to have it all together. So that's why I say people think they're born again, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, saved anyhow, and going to heaven. But it's much more than that. We don't live it. There is no divided heaven. So we want to mirror on earth as it is in heaven. So heaven does not look like that. So we need to do some things now. We need to be bold in our faith. We need to be intentional. And we need to walk in our purpose because God has called us out for this specific time. You, me, whoever is watching this, we were all born for a time like this. And I put it like this. Not only do you need to meet Goliath, Goliath needs to meet you. God has called out some David in this time to rise up against the Goliaths, the big things that are trying to overtake the world and overtake God's people. We have to stand firm in our foundation and God, we have to worship him in spirit and truth. God is calling us out of just being dormant. No, he's setting us on fire for him so that we can go shine our eternal light and our flame. He said that in his word that we are the light of the world. That means we shine bright. It's easy to shine bright on Sunday or other believers, but can you shine bright on this dark world Monday through Saturday? That's a real Christian. We are all the salt of the earth as well. So back in the biblical days, and even still today, salt preserves things, preserves meat and different delicacies. So salt preserves. We're supposed to preserve our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, preserve the earth. And also, you know, salt, get a little... A little sauce, a little flavor, a little spice, a little cake. So we're supposed to preserve and be flavorful. We're not supposed to be bland and blend in with culture and what people think society should be. No, we're supposed to stand out and, and show that we serve a good, mighty, awesome, powerful God. And it's just, it's bigger than us. It is bigger than us. But we want to be faithful servants and, and faithful men and women of Christ. Because there's so many people that know the word, but they're not living the word. These times are showing you need to live the word of God. You need to walk it like you talk it. It's time to put feet to your faith. We need to remove that veil. A lot of people read the word, know the word, but it's time to walk on the word. And we can preach it in church and talk about it in church, but now we're having to walk it out and live 
things through as we saw them in the Bible. Like the Bible is the only book that when you read it, it reads you. And so it's all in the Bible. It's all there, but you just have to open it and make it applicable and have good intentions and and look at the word and look at the world. Instead of looking at skin, look at the sin, you know? It's, it's just a lot. And I just felt like I had to get on here and say this and get this off of my chest because what is it good for me to just sit on all of this? I wanna share that and, and bless somebody else. And so I, I really hope that you all will go back and read Luke chapter 10, 25 through 37. And like I said, just read the whole Luke chapter 10 and, and just be all that God has called you to be. Stop sitting on your gifts. If not now, then when? If not you, then who? Like, it's time, it's time. It's time to birth that book, that idea. <laughs> it's time to give birth. No more abortions, no more miscarriages. No, it's time for you to see this baby to full term. Birth out all that God has called you to be on this earth. We want him to use us until he uses us up. I know that's my prayer every day. And, and when you grow in your faith, I've been growing, growing every day. I no longer pray selfish prayers. I stopped that a while ago. Instead of asking God, me, 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 I want a blessing. God bless me, bless my storehouse, bless my family, bless this, that, that. No. I pray to God, bless me with enough so that I can be a blessing to somebody else. It's bigger than me. It's not just about me. I want to help others to the best of my abilities and in my strength in Christ. That's what I want to do. So I write prayers down in my prayer journal. I'm intentional about my prayers. I pray over family members, friends, people in, in the world that I may not even know. I just pray. James 5 and 16, it tells us the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. They really do. And so I just want to encourage everybody, be blessed, stay motivated in the word of God. And just don't look at these times. Look ahead and look into the, the brighter future and just rest in God. Rest in the knowledge of God that he's all seeing, all knowing. He knew this was going to happen before we even, even got wind of what was yet to come. And so we know that God is omnipresent. Thank you, God. He's omnipresent. That means that he's behind us, blocking our past from us so that he can no longer pull us down. He's with us, walking beside us through our day-to-day -day Christian life. And he's also before us, fighting battles that we don't even have no clue are coming our way. He's preparing the place and he's preparing the person. He's preparing that room for you and me. That when we get there, it'll know, oh yeah, that's who we were waiting on. <sighs> yeah, I feel it. Man. It's just a beautiful sight to see. In the midst of this pandemic, I have had peace peace that surpasses all understanding. I do not place my hope in man. Man will always fall short. Man will always let you down. Or in the government. All these other things. I don't place my, my hope and peace and my knowledge in that. No. I rest in the knowledge of God. The world didn't give this stuff to me. And the world can't take it away. It cannot. And yes, like I said, I have peace in the midst of a pandemic. Instead of worrying, I worship. Instead of panicking, I'm praying. That's a divine exchange of God. And God has blessed me with a lot of discernment to see things for what they really are. And he has commissioned me to help those that I can help. Not everybody will be called to be 
preachers and pastors, but that doesn't discredit your walk and your journey. What God has for you is for you. And what he has for the next man is for the next man. Don't covet what somebody else has. No, want what God wants for you. For you. So just do all that he calls you to do. It's just that simple. And I just wanted to share this with you all. I love each and every one of you. I love you all to life. And I'm just praying for everyone. I'm praying for everyone that may watch this. I'm praying for people just all around the world. I'm praying for all of my brothers and sisters in Christ, which that's the whole world. I don't even know the number of the whole population over the whole world. But I know that we're all in God's hands. We're part of God's body. We are the organisms that make up the organization of Christ. So we just have to believe that, receive it, and walk in. Walk into the fullness of God. It's your boy, AJ, from AJ's Way. And just know, I can't say it enough, I'm praying for everyone. And trouble won't last always. Weeping may endure for a night. But I know joy comes in the morning, right? All right. Y'all take care.